Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yeah, I guess so. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. We'll give a few minutes to let people uh, join the call before we get started. Let's see if I can get a uh, list of participants. Looks like we have a few already. Uh, and we're live on YouTube. Okay, cool. All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's uh, community chat. I am joined by Bri uh, Brandon Hagstrom also known as rigidity rigidity in the community. Uh, welcome, Brandon. How are you? Good. Uh, we're going to be talking today about some really cool projects you have coming up. I know that you have uh, built a bunch of different projects, um, uh, but we're, we have a specific one that we're going to talk about today, the Wallet SDK. But before we get into that, can you uh, give us a little introduction? Like, what is your background in development and more specifically Chia and how you got interested and involved with Chia? Yeah. Um, so I've been interested in software development for around 10 years now, and I first got into it with uh, Quick Basic, where I tried to make some games um, based off of a book I was reading. And at the time, I was pretty obsessed with Minecraft, so I then decided to make my own mods with Java, um, as one does. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I got into making uh, simple server applications with Apache Tomcat, and then I picked up JavaScript and Node.js, because that got um, hard to hard to use. And then I spent a lot of my time interested in game and game engine development. Um, and I even hosted my own game engine for a while, or game jam. And uh, my first introduction into the blockchain space was Chia. And since I wasn't too familiar with Python, I decided to port over um, CLVM, and, which is the runtime that Chia uses on chain and BLS signatures uh, to TypeScript. Okay. Wow. So a lot of different uh, avenues, a lot of different uh, interests. Um, is there something that drew you to Chia specifically or like when it comes to blockchain or like what, what was the, uh, the impetus for, for getting into Chia specifically in the blockchain space? Well, someone I was working with at the time actually introduced me to Chia as something that I could um, help develop applications on. And uh, then I, I kind of fell in love with the technology uh, that Chia has around smart coins and puzzles on chain. And that's kind of what kept me uh, interested in the project long term. Um, so it wasn't so much the farming aspect or comparison to other technologies since I hadn't looked into Ethereum yet, um, but it was just the technology was so amazing to me that I kept my interest. So you've you've worked on a bunch of different projects. How many projects do you think, like specific uh, Chia related projects, have you been involved with? If you could give a rough <laughs> estimate, uh, probably like ten, yeah, or so. So you, how long have you been in uh, in the community, the Chia community? I think it's almost two, three years now. Three years. Okay, so pretty early. Uh. Your your latest project that you're working on is a wallet SDK. Mm -hmm. uh, could you walk us through what that is, what a wallet SDK is, um, and how it would benefit the Chia ecosystem? Yeah. So to write a Chia wallet, you have to do quite a few things. You have to get data from the blockchain, such as making requests to a full node. And you need to be able to determine which ad addresses you have access to, request coin data from the node, parse the coin data into something that the wallet can understand, store it in a database uh, so that you can keep track of it long term, construct and sign transactions, and keep track of coins as they get spent. And there's a lot of moving parts involved in doing all of that, and it's easy to get things wrong. So I think that instead of people having to concern themselves with that and re-implement everything from scratch every time, there should be a set of um, libraries that you can use to sort of hand wave all that away and make it abstracted into something easy to uh, build on top of. And so that's what the water stick is for. Um, but it has to, in my opinion, be flexible enough that you can build any kind of wallet related application that you want. Do you have any examples of like other types of like unique or bespoke wallet applications? 
that have come to mind as you're developing this or or kind of motivated uh, the development of a wallet SDK? Yeah, so in, in addition to just your run-of-the-mill um, Shia wallet with things like NFTs and CADs, you might also want to develop like a, a, a DApp or a DApp. I don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> and you'd be running that in the browser. It wouldn't necessarily do the same things that a normal wallet would do, but it still has to interact with uh, Chia Lisp and coin data that it gets from the wallet. So you would still need a library that you can uh, parse that data and manipulate it uh, on the front end, which you can do given that this is written in Rust by using WebAssembly. Okay. So it's not necessarily, is, is it correct to say that it's not necessarily just for creating the wallets specifically, but facilitating any of the interactions with the blockchain that an application might need? Yeah, I'm trying to make it uh, more modular enough that you can use it for pretty much anything that you would interact with Geo with. Okay. Uh, that's really cool. What is, I know that there's been, uh, you've, you've worked on other uh, projects, including wallets. What is your experience uh, with creating wallets as a whole? Uh, prior to joining Chia, I helped design Arbor Wallet, which was one of, if not the first, mobile light wallet for Chia. Um, and I wrote custom Chia list for the wallet, the node backend for submitting transactions and requesting coin info, and CLVM and VLS uh, libraries and Dart needed for constructing and sending spins on the front end. Um, I worked on a few other small projects that were wallet related here and there, like the uh, Chia example app. Uh, but that's pretty much the main thing that I've worked on in the past. Do you would you say that kind of the the experience of developing the wallets were there a lot of headaches uh, in in those processes, like early on uh, in developing those those wallets? Yeah, it was really tedious um, writing the same code over and over and over. And that's kind of what led into me wanting to build a wallet SDK is that I kept I kept writing um, driver code for Chia's primitives repeatedly, doing the exact same thing in slightly different ways. And I kind of wanted a way that I could just drop that into a project, modify it slightly, and get running with it without having to do that. Yeah. And you said this is written in Rust primarily? Mm -hmm. Uh, what kind of um, uh, compatibility layers do you have? Any like compatibility layers uh, developed alongside of it for other languages or? Uh, not currently, but I do plan on having bindings to JavaScript, Python, and WebAssembly at first. Okay, but I haven't had the time to develop that yet. What uh, what's the current like? How far along are you with the with the project? What kind of features are implemented? What is, you know, what still has yet to be done? Yeah, currently you can um, sign, create and sign transactions for the standard transaction, like normal XCH coins. Um, you can issue cats with both the single issuance and multi issuance tail. Um, you can transfer cats. You can uh, melt them if the tail allows that. Uh, you can mint NFTs. You can transfer NFTs. You can uh, create DIDs. You can recreate DIDs in order to mint the NFTs with them. And uh, you can also create your own custom puzzles and integrate them since it's uh, modular enough to allow that. Um, but so that's that's what it has as far as functionality. There's a little bit of support for offer files, but it's still very early in development. And then um, I'm currently like working on improving the documentation and examples and testing and all that. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, what are some of the design decisions that you made with this wallet SDK, uh, specifically based on like the frustrations that you've had developing wallets um, in the past? What are some of the specific things you were trying to solve and and how did you go about solving those? Oops. On your related or on your uh, previous point with the um, bindings, I I noticed that because I was having to write VLS and CLVM for every single language that I would want to interact with Geo with, um, it, it got tedious because like let's say you want to write a, a backend wallet in JavaScript. You'd have to write all of the same wallet code there. And then you'd have to write it in Dart if you're doing it on the front end of the Flutter app, or maybe in C-sharp if you wanted to integrate it into Unity, things like that. Um, so instead of 
having to write the same code in every single language, I think one of the main reasons I chose Rust was to allow you to deploy it everywhere um, via the same code. You just compile it to a binary and then write bindings to that binary in whatever language you're using. And it can still support uh, multiple platforms. Um, so that was one of the main focuses. I also tried to make it as modular as possible because uh, it's very easy to get trapped into doing things a very specific way when you're writing wallet code. And instead of that, I wanted to allow you to um, sort of compose multiple uh, components together in order to build things the way that you want or to add your own custom behaviors to anything you want. Um, so that's kind of the main design decisions there. OK. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to remind uh, the folks that are are watching that if you have any questions uh, specifically for Brandon about uh, the Wallet SDK, you can post questions in the Q&A section of the uh, Zoom call or on our Discord in the community feedback uh, and events channel. If you post any questions there, we will uh, we will pass them on. Um, what are you doing with the Wallet SDK in its current state right now? Anything in particular? Wallet SDK for a, uh, a side project. It's um, a contract project that I can't really go into the details of, um, but I'm also working on a few side projects of my own, such as an offline signing tool, which allows you to create transactions on one device and then sign them on another. Um, that's already open source. And then really the main project that I'm developing with it is my, uh, my own wallet project called Sage. Okay, so uh, you said previously that you had a, a wallet project card called Arbor. This wallet is, uh, is this mostly kind of a new wallet to kind of test, test drive the wallet SDK, or is there a specific um, use case that you're developing this wallet for? Yeah, so Arbor Wallet was a very, um, very basic. It, it would only allow you to send and receive XCH. It also used a uh, custom TLS puzzle for the addresses which made it not uh, incompatible with everything else, unfortunately. Um, so Sage is, is an entirely new project that's going to, in addition to supporting mobile, also support um, desktop. So it'll be a cross-platform wallet with support for all of Tia's primitives. And it'll, it'll build on top of Arbor in that it'll still support old Arbor wallets as well. Um, but it's an entirely new project. OK. The process of of developing this wallet alongside the wallet SDK, has there been any like crossover of like, oh, I I had a, a design decision in the wallet SDK that in the in real world application when I'm trying to develop this wallet just is not working or it needs to be changed differently. Is have you run into any of those? Yeah, when when I started working on the wallet SDK initially, I didn't really have a specific project in mind to use it, and so I designed everything in a way that I thought was going to be really flexible and, and easy to use. Um, but then when I actually went to integrate that into my uh, wallet application, I realized that it was actually uh, so flexible that it became tedious and annoying to integrate. And um, it actually ended up locking me into certain ways of doing things because it was too flexible. So that kind of led me into changing the design of the wallet SDK over time. Uh, based on the my actual usage of it. Interesting. Uh, let me pull this out real quick. Sorry for the stream. Um, Johnny Tarvanian, uh, I hopefully I pronounced that correct. Uh, asks how long have you been working on the SDK at this point? Um. Well, I know that I've I've been wanting to build something like this for. Uh, since I started working with Intia. Um, I'd say I've actually been developing it for maybe about six months. Uh, I can actually just check the... GitHub. Let's see. The earliest commits. Okay, that might take a while. And this was this would be the active development, right? You you said you've you've had the idea for this uh, for this wallet SDK for a while, probably three years since you started, uh, working with Chia, uh, but yeah, six fact, actually, ish months. Yeah. In fact, I actually released a uh, JavaScript library 
built on top of the BLS and CLVM library that I wrote called Chia Wallet with. And it was it was kind of the first um, rendition of this kind of concept of a wallet SDK. It ended up being too slow and not flexible enough for a lot of things, but it was the earliest time I'd actually worked on that. Um, but yeah, I, I've been working on the SDK since October 31st, it looks like. Okay. So kind of getting close to a year at this point. Eight months. Uh, how, what percentage, if you could give like a percentage of completion to like what your what your end goal is as at least for the first iteration of it how close do you think you are i'd say that um i have a lot of the core primitives of shia finish um there's a lot more polish that could be done but as far as what's left for like a first stable version i would think that finishing the offer implementation and making it um, easy enough to use would be the main thing um, so I'd say I'm, I'm pretty close, like maybe 75%. Um, is this project uh, open source, currently open source? Yep. It's, Are um, others able to contribute? Yeah, it's um, fully open source. The repo, I don't know how I can send it in the chat here, but um, yeah, it's it's open open source on my uh, GitHub, github.com slash rigidity slash geowall SDK and uh definitely open to people contributing and i release new versions uh every couple of weeks okay uh we'll get that link uh sent out probably with the uh with the um post show or post event announcements and stuff uh make sure mm -hmm. people can find that um how can others oh actually real quick we have another question uh there's been mentions of the new wallet sync protocol. Um, does your SDK use that or is there any relation to, to how your SDK works? Yeah, so I actually designed that as well. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely um, the wallet SDK and the wallet I'm developing are a key. They're, they're like one of the main things that I wanted it for is because I noticed that the, the old wallet protocol made it difficult to build wallets that were able to quickly resync um, from where they left off without having to download all of the coins again and, and check them, which is very tedious. And they also have to do that in order to prevent uh, reorgs from messing with the current state of the wallet. So those were the main reasons I developed that. And then also being able to unsubscribe from uh, things that you're subscribed to and request uh, subscriptions to mempool items like tra uh, transactions that are sent in the mempool. Those are the main um, things that I, I wanted in this uh, wallet. Okay. Um, how can others use the SDK in its current state? Mm -hmm. um, well, like I said, it's open source and it's also on the Rust uh, crates.io registry. So if you are Developing a Rust project, you can easily install that with Cargo Add Chia Wallet SDK. And um, if you want to write something in another language and use the Wallet SDK, uh, there aren't bindings yet, but I will be developing bindings for it. Um, so th that's really the main way to use it right now is just to um, add as a dependency to your Rust project. And actually, um, Michael Taylor and Yakihito have Written, uh, started writing new data layer puzzles and using the wallet SDK to write the driver code for that. Very cool. Very cool. If someone wanted to contribute uh, to the project, what would be, what would you say is like, what is most needed at the moment? Is it findings for different languages? Is it finishing up offer file work? Or is that something that you're like deep into and, and already handling? Yeah, um, I would say that the most important things personally are um, if someone wants to contribute bindings to any language they want, or if uh, if you have like something in the documentation that isn't clear or is missing, because frankly, a lot, of, a lot of things are missing, then writing documentation would be really helpful. And um, if there's any ch common Chia puzzles that are missing from the forever code, then you can add that as well. Um, what 
Uh, are there are there any features that you're building into the wallet SDK that might not be available in, in other solutions? Mm -hmm. um, the one that comes to mind immediately is peer discovery. Uh, usually how you would build a, a light wallet for Chia is that you would um, basically host your own full node and make an API on top of it and connect to that. Uh, the problem with that is that it's a single point of failure. So if that node goes down, then all of the users connecting to it via the wallet would no longer be able to see their balance or make transactions until it comes back online, which isn't ideal. <laughs> so I'm working on uh, a way of basically just creating a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, server that can reach out to, to peers on the on the blockchain and connect to them directly without having to go through a single intermediary uh, node. That way it works pretty much the exact same way as the official reference wallet. And you can write whatever code you want on top of that. Cool. Cool. Um, I, I think I'm probably asked this already, but what's the current status? Yeah, it's, I think it's... Yeah, it's, you're, you're using it in a few different projects. Uh, you're developing a, a wallet alongside of it. Um, there's a few features that you're still you're still working on. Is there anything else that you wanted to uh, to talk about specifically about Wallet SDK? Um, hmm. I would say that uh, I I would definitely love people to go and try it for their own projects and let me know what feedback you may have. Um. I'm definitely open to any and all feedback or contributions on it since it's a lot for me to do by myself. Um, yeah, that's much all I'd note. <laughs> the one thing that I really appreciate about like this type of solution is I know in working on uh, a few sample apps, the uh, the user experience around using an app that's kind of built around blockchain has historically been uh, pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And having to like jump between different uh, disparate apps to approve transactions or set up an account over here so that we can like use it uh, in, in a different app. Like it just, it, there's a lot of roadblocks uh, that is um, put up in that kind of system. This sounds like, and and you can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but it sounds like this would eliminate a lot of those roadblocks and kind of be able to put all the blockchain aspects kind of in the back end of an app and the and the user experience would be very much uh kind of a step removed from any uh specific blockchain interaction is that correct yeah exactly i think that the um all of the functionality other than the user actually signing a transaction should be able to be done by the app itself so you don't need to keep confirming on like a wallet or anything like that that's awesome. <laughs> I like that. Um, I know that you have a couple of other projects that you're working on, and maybe we can tease a couple of those. There is uh, a specific one. You're working on a uh, language, a new language for Chia. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I won't get too into the weeds of that, but I've been working on a compiler for a new uh, smart plane language similar to Chia um, it's a separate project from the Wattis Decay, okay, but I do anticipate it being easy to write puzzles in Roo and compile them for use within the Wattis Decay. Okay. And uh, both are in, written in Rust, so there might be some fun integrations there in the future. Um, it's, and to, to clarify, Roo is the name of the language that you're creating. Um, would this, is this language like, would then compile to GLisp? It compiles to CLVM, which is the um, thing okay. that it's like. Gotcha. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, any other projects you uh, are currently working on? Oh, I'm working on Sage. Sage, <laughs> yeah, of course, the wallet. Uh, cool. Uh, well, is uh, we'll give a couple uh, minutes for any other questions to come through. Um, those are all the, the questions that I had uh, specifically. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A uh, function in the Zoom call. Or if you're on our Discord, you can use the community feedback and events channel. Um, uh, but unless anyone has any last minute questions, uh, I want to thank Brandon so much for, uh, the work that you've been doing, the projects that you've been creating. Um, 
And uh, I think it's it's a it's a really cool um, addition to the ecosystem. Uh, we have a couple questions coming through. Of course, it's always last minute. Um, uh, one question is, what is your favorite wallet produced to date, other than Sage, which is going to be the oh, favorite, right? Favorites now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, Are there things that other wallets do that you appreciate um, that kind of have inspired, you know, the, the way that you think about how wallets should be made? I'd say that um, Gobi is really easy to use and um, it being in the browser is, is really nice. Uh, you can just you know, interact with the wallet uh, right where you're using a, a dApp, for example, or um, like you can connect to a website with it directly. That's pretty neat. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of really interesting uh, features that other wallets have, but um, yeah. Uh, they're they're all nice in their own ways. Mm -hmm. They're all kind of bespoke for for the different use cases they're they're made for. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a, a a question that we have answered before, but we'll we'll just answer it again for them. What do you want others to build on the SDK? I think you said findings for other languages, documentation. Um, yeah, and and if there's any driver code that's missing, then feel free to add that as well. Okay. Um. If the wallet SDK, there's a question on Discord. If the wallet SDK is written in Rust, does that mean to use the SDK, your project also needs to be in Rust? Currently, yes. But if we write bindings to other languages, then you would be able to um, just install it as you would any other dependency for that language. And then it would have a slightly different API from the Rust, um, the, the core Rust library, but you should still be able to use it in other contexts. And then also, uh, since Rust can be compiled to WebAssembly. You can also use it in the browser, um, either directly through WebAssembly bindings or write Rust code and then compile that to WebAssembly and then use that in the browser. Cool. Uh, what uh, platforms or targets do you plan Sage to be available for initially? Um, well, ideally, because the uh, framework that I'm using allows it. I'm hoping to launch it on Mac OS, Windows, Linux, iOS, and Android. Um, but, you know, I, I, iOS is historically hard to publish apps to, so that might be delayed a little bit. We'll see. Okay. But you're, you are targeting kind of the major, major platforms. Okay. Uh, and as our last question, Brian Freeman asks, what will you be ordering from DoorDash today to celebrate your first AMA? Probably a Chipotle as usual. <laughs> it's a good choice. It's a good choice. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for for tuning in. Um, I think it's really exciting. Uh, the Wallet SDK is, I think, a really uh, really cool addition to the ecosystem. I'm really excited to see what comes out of it, what people build with it, um, and see it evolve. So, thank well, you again. Of... I'm sorry. A lot of fun developing it. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, have a great rest of your uh, week. If keep uh, keep posted on our Discord and announcements channels for uh, future events, we uh, try to do these pretty regularly. So so keep an eye out for those, and uh, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.